The FTSE 100 hits another record high. Welcome to Market Insight, I'm Ramsan Karmali. Britain's main equity index was boosted by Anglo-American after Reuters reported Glencore is exploring an approach for the miner. Across the rest of Europe, French banks were the flavour of the day after better than expected results from Societe Générale and Credit Agricole. Well, to help us look at that in more detail, I'm joined by Chris Beecham, Chief Market Analyst at IG. Chris, let's start with the FTSE 100. It hit another record high today, above 8,200. What's been the main thrust behind it in recent weeks, in your opinion? Is this just about catching up with its European peers? Partly. I think it's, it's hard to underplay how cheap the UK looks vis-a-vis -vis the rest of the world, at least on a, on a PE metric. If you look at others, maybe you could you could argue the toss a bit more. But really, from years and years, but he's been left in the shadow of not just the US, but as you say, it's European peers as well. It's finally beginning to catch up to an extent, uh, realising that the political problems that bedeviled the UK economy for so many years have, have gone away. The uncertainty has disappeared, I think, and now people can look at it um, in a much more positive light and this is really the, the thing that's piling in because when you've got such an index that's cheap relative to to its peers and especially the us people are prepared to say look okay it's a record high but there's on a valuation basis at least in the medium term uh, more to come uh, we think before the index starts to even look as perhaps overvalued as certainly the us looks at least in the medium term now there's been more speculation surrounding anglo-american with potential interest from glencore now do you think we could see a bidding war develop with bhp Certainly, I think these are two big mining giants with ambitions to expand and, and cement their arguably existing uh, dominant positions in, in several uh, key markets. I think the fact that Anglo-American will become a, a bid target that needs to be broken up in some elements um, makes it all the more interesting, really. So, yes, this is certainly it's, it's, we expected someone else to, to make a play. Um, really, someone else is bound to be flushed out with the BHP news. Um, and now we wait to see over the long weekend whether BHP go away, think about it and come up with a different offer uh, next week to try and uh, sweeten the deal. Now, we heard from two of the big French lenders today as well, SocGen and Credit Agricole. What did you make of their results? Quite a positive set of numbers, uh, really, and a good increase in customers for both. Um, really, European banks, of course, have been a problem today for a long time, but it looks like this is a, a much more solid set of results and a good foundation for and further gains. And I think we're, with, with the sort of departure of recession fears, shall we say, over, over the last few months, that maybe the Eurozone won't fall into a dire period of negative growth. And of course, you've got rate cuts in, in from the ECB likely as well, which, while it hits them in one sense, also helps boost the economy. So I think people are, again, looking at European banks in a lot more positive way. Um, than they have done for a while. And there's a valuation element to that too. I think really people think, well, look at the US, they're more expensive. If we're looking for, for banking stocks, actually maybe some of the bad news has now been priced in to stock gen and credit agricole, and maybe it's been overdone to an extent. Maybe there's some more upside there to come too. Now, staying in France, an industrial output actually contracted 0.3%. Reuters poll had expected growth. Um, this just highlights the fragility of the Eurozone economy as a whole, doesn't it? It does to an extent. I think the impact has been muted in markets this morning because this is really backward looking data. We've had Q1 GDP. So um, it's very much in the news already. And people are now looking forward to see how Q2 pans out. So I think that the French will get a, a pass on this one. It's not great, certainly. And it's, uh, it's joined the theme of of struggling eurozone data but i think people are prepared to say look let's wait and see what the next one figures are for the next couple of months certainly and beyond um to hope that that matches the improved outlook for the eurozone economy that i think is beginning to take hold uh, across the continent now uh pmi data out today for the uk and british services companies reported the strongest upswing in activity in almost a year during april the uk economy looks like it's turned a corner now after the shallow recession of last year so what will this mean for policymakers at the bank of england next week well, I think it, it's great news for them in the sense that they don't have to worry too much about uh, another drop back in, into negative growth. Um, I wouldn't say it complicates their situation too much, really, because it's, it's one month's figure. It's not something going to mean that rate cuts are off the table. Um, at the moment, I think they'd welcome both good news on, on economic growth in this way and also good news on inflation. I think that's where the, the, the main focus is. They'd like to just give the economy just that little bit more breathing room um, with a couple of judicious cuts to interest rates. And I don't think today's data really undermines that thesis. I think they'd be rather glad to, to take the good news there and move on and focus on the next round of inflation, see whether that does give them a bit more air cover in terms of looking to cut rates over the course of the summer. Chris Beecham from IG, many thanks for your thoughts. And that's Market Insight. Don't forget, you can watch more videos on Reuters.com.